Aloha, I'm Tyler Tokioka, Chairman of the Board of Island Insurance. I'm also an American Heart Association volunteer here in Hawaii. I'm a husband, a dad, and a stroke survivor. On December 21st, 2020, it was a normal day at the office. About mid-afternoon, I felt that something was not quite right with myself. I had several meetings, one on Zoom, one on call, where I felt that I was slurring my speech a little bit, but wasn't quite sure. And then when I went to send an email, my left hand wasn't hitting the right keys. And at that point, I knew something was wrong. I Googled stroke symptoms. And then I realized that I might be suffering a stroke. I decided it was probably best to head home. I got to my car, started driving, and gave my wife a call. You know, I told her that I think I'm suffering a stroke, but I'm not sure. Should I head home or should I go to the ER? She, of course, told me to go to the ER, which I'm thankful that I did. It was great that my wife told me to go to the ER rather than coming home. Part of it was that, I guess, as a typical Japanese male, you don't really want to think anything's really going wrong with you. So you think, ah, don't worry, I'll just go home. It's not anything major. All of this stuff will probably go away in time. So why create any kind of hassle or issue with, with for the family or somebody else to worry about? I'm living proof that you can survive a stroke if you act fast. F-A-S-T. Face drooping, arm weakness, slurred speech, and if you have those symptoms, T, time to call 911 really important to call them as quickly as possible. For every minute of time that passes, two million brain cells are at risk of dying due to lack of oxygen and or blood flow. You know, for people like me who don't have a lot of brain cells to begin with, it can be fairly critical that you don't want to lose those. Time equals brain tissue. So if there's any question, call 911. There are certain things that I, can, I can't do because of the fact that I'm unable to use my left hand. I do rely a lot on others to help me. So I think that's probably the, the most significant thing that's changed my life is that you become extra reliant on the support network that you have family friends and even co-workers depending on what I'm doing or where I'm going I had to change my lifestyle as far as the diet that I eat I can't just eat all of the fried food that I normally would have that extra max salad gravy on the rice etc I have to be a little bit more de deliberate eat salads which I never did before eat fruit which I ate once in a while and not drink as much diet coke as I've had in the past I try to walk 20 to 30 minutes a day with my wife or on my own, but just trying to get a little bit more exercise than walking from the sofa to the TV and from the sofa to the restroom. I'm lucky that I survived this stroke. It's taken me a lot of effort to get to the point where I am today, and I'll leave you with these few tidbits to remember. See your primary care physician so you know your numbers. Eat healthy, exercise regularly, and above all, remember, fast. F-A-S-T. Until you go through something like this, there's no way to know exactly who's going to be there for you in time of need. And I was just amazed at the amount of people that came to my assistance without batting an eye, without asking for it. It just, offers came all over the place. So those of you that are watching, thank you so much. You have no idea how much everything you did to support my recovery efforts meant to me. Whether it was a kind word, an email, dropping off food, etc. It just made my recovery that much easier and that much more robust. Thank you so much. You mean the world to me. Thank you.